Okay, hey, this is Brian Ewald, and um, got a JMod 100 with the 212 cabinet here. What I'm gonna do is kind of go through, uh, think of this as kind of like a quick uh, video instruction manual on, on dialing these in and setting them up. Uh, obviously, it comes in, it's a single channel amp. Uh, you've got your input volume and you know treble, middle, bass, and bright switch, which are all fairly self-explanatory. Then the gain stage, which is essentially in a loop, an effects loop of sorts, uh, after the preamp. Um, it's not a separate channel, it's just an additional gain stage. So all this, of course, is still, uh, wherever these settings are will affect the way this sounds. Uh, you've got your input level, which controls the amount of actual gain and overdrive you get, and that's the output level of that gain stage. So you can set it to be uh, at a, the proper level against the, the clean channel without that. Then you have the global presence control and uh, master volume output. Obviously, this switch, is, this switch here does your effects loop, and this switch is your extra gain channel in the loop on and off, um, or uh, both of those you can put into the foot switch settings to control those via foot switch. John chose not to put a reverb in here because he has a uh, digital reverb that he absolutely loves. Um, so the best way to demo this is by putting some sort of uh, high quality reverb through the effects loop. It also demos very well that the fact that you can use the loop, turn it on and off without affecting the tone at all. Um, I would start by suggesting doing that. This is with it on, with it off. This is switching the loop completely out of the system. Back in. Doesn't affect the tone at all. So let's start off just getting a basic clean tone. Um, don't be afraid of the fact that this is a 100 watt amp. It's actually quite um, reasonable in its output volume for the fact that it's 100 watts. It doesn't feel any louder to me than any 50 watt amp I've ever played. It's just um, part of the overall headroom and design of the amp. Part of the way it sounds is that big transformer and there's a lot of the headroom is eaten up in the low end that comes into the front of the amp is the way it reacts. So start off, make sure you have the master up a little bit. Um, you know, sounds best once you have a, a chance to open it up. But we're sitting in a fairly small room and I'm talking over it. You know, I've got the master up over noon and the input volume over noon. So um, that's not terribly loud. I, you know, don't be afraid to, to turn this up um, and, you know, get this up over halfway. Uh, we'll look at the presence in just a second. So starting with this side, the most clean headroom you're going to get is having this somewhere in this area. If you want any drive on the front end and you crank this up, it will push into overdrive. It's a different voice than when we're using this, but it will drive on the clean channel. So if you would like clean headroom, keep this somewhere around here. And like I said, don't be afraid to put push that master section. So. What you get it, to me with this amp is you have a clean sound that reacts and compresses almost as if there's gain. So uh, there's not as big of a spike on that, that initial note or the initial attack of the note. Um, it reacts without sounding and feeling squished like a compressor is on it. It feels like there's compression or gain on it and you have all the sustain that you would typically get, get with some gain on the amp, uh, which makes it actually very forgiving and easy to play. Um, so that's where you're gonna get your most clean headroom. I would start off with the, the controls pretty much at noon and dial into taste. There is a lot of low end of this amp, so um, if it's breaking up too early or certain pickups, you might wanna roll the bass back just a little bit. Um, but the tone controls really sound good, uh, even maxed out in different directions. Uh, the bright switch I would leave up to your taste depending on the guitar. I think with this particular guitar, um, because it has that preamp on it, um, I, I typically leave that off. Um, here it is with it off. And on. Sounds great both ways. Really kind of depends on your, your preference. Now dialing in the, the lead channel is probably the trickiest part. Uh, or that, that lead boost. Um, 
first thing I would do in, in kicking it on is switching it on and off. Use this output volume. I, I tend to find that somewhere around 2.30 to 3 o'clock is a good starting spot um, to get a, a balance uh, between that and uh, you running the clean channel. Now you can get different voices of gain depending on where you set these. You will get more gain by pushing either or both of these. The maximum amount of gain is by pushing both of them up. You can see with both of those up, it really starts to squash and compress. Um, it's not really meant as a high gain amp. It really gets into that kind of like blooming kind of sound, uh, but it's it's got a kind of a gnarly kind of a rawness to it, almost kind of like, um, more like a tweed breakup to me. Um, so I don't tend to max both of those out. I voice, I like to kind of, with each guitar, try each one up. You get a different voice by maxing out this one and running this one low. As, and then doing the opposite, running the input volume of the the initial gain stage up, and then this is just more of a boost. You can hear when I play two notes. That low end really kind of overtakes the notes. Um, uh, I would say probably my favorite setting, because I do like to, to run that input gain at least around uh, 12 or 1 o'clock. Uh, for, for the clean channel sound, my favorite. And then I dial this in. Uh, I like to run this a little lower and push this up so it stays punchier. You find that, again, it's just a matter of finding that, that volume. Uh, the lower this is, the more you have to run the output section. Sometimes close to all the way up. probably my favorite area on this and then you know using some sort of uh, boost pedal on the front end to push it into another level of overdrive if you want but here you're going from a really nice fat clean sound into creamy and milky but it, it there's still a, a, a high-end bite and chime to it um, very vintage feeling uh, to me again just adjusting to taste one thing you, you can be very um, heavy-handed with with all the controls run the presence all the way down to all the way up it's very different it's not subtle at all uh, but it's usable on both sides. If you don't like the really dark, creamy, or the darker aspect, you know, flip the bright switch on and run the presence somewhere up a little past two, and you get... The main thing with this amp is not just the way it sounds, but just the way it feels and reacts to your playing, depending on where the settings are. There's a, a lot of... Um, bloom and bounce to it, but the, the low end still kind of, there's still uh, a lot of uh, responsiveness to the notes, the way they kind of bounce back when you're playing, especially like percussive. Um, it's, a, it's a feel as much as it is sound with this amp. Um, so again, don't be afraid of like extreme settings, cranking the mid way up, or bringing it way back. You know, it really 
sounds good anywhere in there. Um, uh, you, can, you can be pretty extreme with the settings depending on how loud you are in the room, depending on the, uh, the guitar. But I would say the main thing to do is don't be afraid to open up that master volume. Uh, that's really where it sounds its best. If you're running this down way low, trying to push these up. Um, it doesn't sound bad. It just doesn't really come alive. Uh, bringing this back and opening that up, it's, um, it's a lot more open sounding, less compressed. Um, and you know, you still have plenty of headroom on top of there. So that's the uh, the J Mod 100. <laughs>